Hello, my name is Pete and I have prepared this tutorial for calculating the spot or release point when skydiving. The calculations will be based on the drop zone in Waverly, Tennessee. It will use the ground weather data for Waverly, Tennessee and the winds aloft data from Nashville, Tennessee, which is the closest airport that has winds aloft data. Step one is to gather critical information. Weather.com was used to gather the ground wind data and USAirNet.com was used to gather the winds aloft data. Once you have the data, we can do some calculations. We are going to use some hypothetical numbers to come up with calculations to demonstrate the steps for this tutorial. Make sure you have real data for your own calculations. I'm going to show you these web pages real quick. Okay, this is a web page from weather.com for the daily weather ever hourly. And notice that over here it shows you the wind direction and velocity for the ground winds in Waverly. Okay, this is the airsports.net or uh, usairnet.com and it gives you the winds aloft data. Uh, it'll select a bunch of different airports. Uh, so you want to make sure you have the correct one selected. In this case, it's going to be Nashville, Tennessee. Scroll to the bottom of the page and it's going to give you a table that has the winds at 3, 6, 9, and 12,000 feet with the corresponding directions and velocities. Okay. All right, so this is, these are the ones we're going to use for this tutorial, though. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and average the wind speeds and directions for 0, 3, and 6,000 feet. All right, so we're going to say 10 plus 20 plus 30 equals 60 divided by 3 equals 20. So the average wind speed is going to be 20 miles per hour. Now the directions we have 030, 060, 090, 180 divided by 3 will give you 60. So the average direction is going to be 60 degrees. We're going to go ahead and copy that because we're going to need that later. Okay, the next step is to go ahead and calculate the canopy drift in miles and direction. The formula for the canopy drift is the average is average speed in miles per hour for 0, 3, and 6,000 feet divided by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour multiplied by the minutes under canopy. This may seem very complicated, but it isn't. You are simply taking an average of the miles per hour and dividing it by 60 to convert it into miles per minute and then multiplying it by the amount of minutes you will be under canopy or in, or in free fall in order to determine the drift. A canopy descends at a rate of 1,000 feet per minute, so if you deploy at 5,000 feet, you will be under canopy for approximately 5 minutes. So this is what we will use. Okay, so we're going to get our calculator out again. And we have our average speed and direction. So we have our Average speed in miles per hour is 20 divided by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour is 0.333 miles per minute. We're going to multiply that by 5 and that's going to give us 1.666 miles of canopy drift. So 1.66, we're going to round that 1.7. And that's going to be at 0, 060 0 degrees. All right. Let's go ahead and plot that on the map. Okay. The scale of the map is 1 inch equals 1 mile. So we're going to change that to 1.7 inches and 0, 060 0 degrees. This is going to be the, represent the canopy drift. And the O here is going to represent the opening point or the optimal opening point for our parachute. Okay, the next step is to average the wind speeds and directions for the free fall portion. We're going to go ahead and do this for the winds at 6, 9, and 12,000 feet. Okay, so we have 30 
plus 40 plus 50 equals 120 divided by 3 equals 40. So the average velocity is going to be 40 miles an hour. And the average direction, we're going to go ahead and figure that out, is uh, 90 plus 120 plus 150 equals 360 divided by 3 is 120. Okay, so the average speed is 40 and the average direction is 120. So we'll go ahead and copy that and we're going to bring that down here. Okay, the formula for the freefall drift is exactly the same as the formula for the canopy drift. You have the average wind speed miles per hour divided by 60 times the minutes in freefall equals the miles of freefall drift. Okay, so we're going to plug our numbers into the formula here. So we're going to have 40 divided by 60 equals 0.66 miles per minute of freefall drift. Or 0.66 miles per hour of, of free fall, and we're going to multiply that by by one equals 0.666 miles of free fall drift. All right, so we're going to go ahead and round that to the nearest tenth of a mile. So 0 0.66 round to 0 0.7 miles at 120 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the map. Okay, we're going to represent the free fall drift with the yellow line here. And we're going to change this to 0.7 miles at 120 degrees. And then we're going to go ahead and plot this on the map. Okay, we're going to touch the, the point of that line to the opening point. And then I'm going to take the free fall point symbol and place it over the base of that. So this is going to represent where we're going to start our free fall. Finally, we have to calculate for the forward throw, or step six. Pilots like to fly into the wind on jump run. Now, when a jumper leaves the plane, they continue to move forward and down until their momentum fades. This is known as the forward throw which is the distance it takes for the momentum to fade and gravity to take over. And this is usually about 0 0.25 miles. So for this tutorial, the wind direction at 12,000 feet is 150 degrees. So we're going to say the pilot's going to be, want to be flying at 150 degrees. So we want to draw a line uh, representing the direction of flight oriented to 150 degrees through the free fall point and then plot a point 0 0.25 miles prior to or downwind of the free fall point um, on this line and this is known as the release point. We'll go ahead and go to the map and plot all this stuff. Okay, so we're not going to change that. We're going to say 330 for this. Uh, the reason I did it this way is because it's the 330 is the back azimuth of 150 okay and then but you notice that the arrow is headed toward 150 and now we're going to take this and place the R or the release point 0.25 miles prior to this uh, with the relative to the direction of flight okay so theoretically if the pilot is flying from the northeast northwest to the southeast on a heading of 150 and they release here, the forward throw is going to move the jumper to the free fall point. The free fall drift is going to assist the jumper and move them to the opening point. And then the canopy drift is going to move the jumper back to the target. I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something. Uh, have a great day. Blue skies.